Okay, folks, Chuck here with Hillbilly Half Acre Homestead. I hope this video is not going to be too shaky for you, but kind of had an exciting with all the devastation that we've had with the with the bee yard. Uh, kind of had an exciting moment these last couple of days. Yesterday it was nice and warm. You know, I've been putting feed on this hive. I had 10 hives going into winter, and thanks to that blessed child, El Nino, uh, our winter has been so warm that these guys have just burned through the calories, and nine of those 10 hives are now gone. They starved. Okay, and the fir your first instinct is, well, Chuck, you're a bad beekeeper. Well, one, I may be a bad beekeeper, but you gotta understand that even though it was warm enough that these guys burned through their feed faster than they should have normally, it was still too cold for me to come out here and open up a hive and do an inspection. Okay, because I would have done more harm than good. All right, now I did learn from this and there are some things that I'm gonna do different going into fall this year, but that's for another video. Today what I'm showing you, okay, yesterday, February 1st, I was in this hive. After giving them some feed a couple of days ago, I was in this hive yesterday. And uh, just to make sure I had a queen and nothing had happened with my queen, I found the queen. Not only did I find the queen, but I found about a, a softball size spot on the side of one frame in here that uh, it looked like she had just recently laid up because I actually witnessed her laying an egg in one of the cells. Well, as soon as I saw that, it was a little windy and what have you, that's all I wanted to know. As soon as I saw that, I closed the hive back up and I got out of there. Now, okay, today, February 2nd. I don't know if you're paying attention or if you can, how well you can see this, but if you pay attention, You'll see these little gals coming in with pollen on February 2nd in Northeast Arkansas. This is maple pollen. It, well, I assume it's maple pollen. I'm not a pollen. I'm not a pollen expert, or I don't know if there is such thing as a pollenologist. But anyway, I'm not one. But uh, these little gals are just. Uh, at, once I put that feed on them. These little gals have just kicked into high gear and they are just, uh, they're just going wild, okay? Uh, again, I said I'm, a, uh, I'm trying to keep this. Sorry if you're hearing some kind of strange noise. I can't tell, I can't hear anything, but I'm holding, I'm, I'm doing this without a tripod. I hope this is not too shaky for you. But I also, it's windy out here. We've had, we've had wind advisories the last couple of days as well. So I'm trying to block the microphone on this camera with my hand to prevent wind noise but uh, even though it was windy it is pretty out even though it's windy but it's still windy conditions are not the best for making video but I was just so excited oops I was just so excited to see that pollen coming in I knew it was about time but I just told somebody online last night that uh, it would probably be a week or so but nope just goes to show you what old Chuck knows. Mother Nature knows more about pollen than I do, and rightfully so. Anyway, uh, this was an eight frame hive, double deep. Believe it or not, when I caught it and, caught and, found and discovered that it still had live bees in it, they did not have an ounce or a drop of food Actually, I take that back. I think on one frame, I found about four cells that had a little bit of honey in it still. Four cells. So I immediately, I had, we had some sugar cubes in the house. I immediately put some of those up on top of the hive or up on top of the frames and put the lid back on. That was a few days ago. Now, since then, and a lot of you are gonna tell me that I shouldn't do this, but I have spoken with some beekeepers that have you know, up in the 20 plus years experience. And they tell me that what I'm doing is acceptable because of the way I'm doing it. But normally you would feed dry sugar this time of the year, okay? Now what I'm doing is inside this, 
this is a medium five frame box on top of a deep there's no frames sorry there's no frames in that upper box all right none what there what there is is i have a bunch of the remainder of the box of sugar cubes i had scattered them out across the top of the frames they've almost collected all of that and on the very far end of this box down here sitting up on a couple of sticks that i've got on top of the frames is a pint jar full of two to one sugar syrup i just refilled that jar okay i put the jar on them yesterday put the full jar of sugar syrup on them yesterday and there was maybe half an inch of syrup or basically just the lid full of sugar syrup in that jar about 20 minutes ago i refilled that jar with two to one sugar solution and i put it back now a couple of precautions i know i know moisture in the hive is not good but here's something to keep in mind i'm also giving them dry sugar okay so any excess moisture in the hive the dry sugar will actually work to absorb the extra moisture that's coming from any extra moisture that's coming from having the sugar syrup in there that's one thing number two i was worried about having having uh the sugar syrup or the jar it's only got a couple of holes in the lid by the way it's just a regular pint mason jar with a regular ball lid and, and ring on it okay and it's got two little i think 16th inch holes or maybe even smaller uh, in the lid and it's turned upside down all right well i was worried even with just a couple of holes that that syrup even even being a two to two to one and pretty thick i was worried that that stuff i didn't want that at night to start to drip for some reason and drip down on top of my cluster and kill my bees because if do you know anything about bees at all they can handle sub-zero temperatures but they can't handle 40 degrees if they're wet so you don't want that okay uh, so what i did as a precaution when these bees cluster they seem to when i noticed the cluster they seem to be clustering whoops i'm gonna get this right here in a second when well, they seem to be clustering in the center of the box and there is a big enough cluster in this that they'll ball around all five frames okay but they don't go all the way to the end it's what I noticed. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the sugar syrup and I'm moving it. It's right down here, just in the center of this, just in the center of this top box right here inside there. I'm not opening it up, okay? I bugged them. I bugged them and being short of feed like they have been, it's kind of making and plus the cooler temperatures and windy conditions, it made them it's made it'll make them a little more uh, you know, I'm not going to put up with your crap attitude and I don't uh, uh, I respect that. <laughs> uh, I've been stung. I don't mind getting stung, but you know, it's one of those deals. I'd rather not. Let's put it that way. So I'm just going to leave them alone. They know what they're doing. I've helped them and done what I can for them. And really, I don't see how I can do anything else. But the jar is just in the center of this top box. It's sitting on top of the frames that are in the bottom box, okay? And it's at the far end. Now, the reason I did that, okay? Number one, there is a humongous ball of bees underneath there, okay? They don't have any problem getting to it once they know it's there, all right? So, that being said, if they have to cluster, they're going to leave that area, and they're going to cluster around the brood that it was in the center of these frames down here. I don't know how, many, how, many, how much the queen laid, okay? I told you I saw the one little spot on one half of one frame, and I put the box back together. That's all I wanted to know. She's laying and she's alive. That's what. That's why I was in here. That's the only reason. That's the only reason I opened this hive up because I already knew they were out of food, and I was taking steps to correct that. But I wanted to know that I had a queen in there. I wanted to know that this was a live hive. Otherwise, come payday, I wanted to know ahead of time that I needed to order a queen from somewhere so that I can keep this hive alive. Luckily, I don't have to do that, at least not at this point, because I have a queen in there, and she is already laying. So, uh, anyway, the jar being down there, if it does drip in the night when it's, 
you know, because we're going to have some temperatures. I looked at our 10-day forecast, and we do have one night where it's forecast to drop down to like 27. Now, that's a week from now, so that, that forecast can change. It can turn, and it can be colder than that, or it could be like not below freezing at all. But either way, the, the, the bees shouldn't be under that at night if it should start to drip. Okay, because most of them are going to cluster around that brood to keep it warm. Even, you know, even with it being above freezing, they've still got to keep them warmer than that. So, that's, that's trying to keep the sugar syrup from falling on the cluster. Okay, I told you how I feel about the moisture situation with having the dry sugar in there. And they need, they'll need the extra moisture. Uh, a lot of times when you put dry sugar into a beehive, the bees will actually use any moisture that collects, say if it was to condense on the surface of the lid, the bees will actually take that moisture and mix that with the sugar to liquefy it so that they can actually consume it. Bees can't eat or consume dry sugar. They have to have some kind of moisture with it. Okay, so we're kind of, we're kind of, doing two different things here to help you know one situation will help correct any downfalls from the other situation in other words so hopefully 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 <clears throat> uh, so you know this little hive along with along with about a pound of sugar cubes in a, in a 24 hour period along with almost I'm gonna say three-fourths of a pound of sugar cubes because there's about a fourth of them left in there <clears throat> excuse me they've also taken up almost a pint of two to one sugar syrup so for this size hive i don't think that's too bad because there's definitely enough bees in there if if needed they can take it faster than that <clears throat> but as i showed you a few minutes ago it's uh 74 degrees today and uh, these little gals have been to bringing in the pollen so that's our bee update on february 2nd 2016 and uh out of 10 out of 10 highs again we had nine to starve out thanks to el, el nino and these warm winters you know when your winters are warmer because your bees don't go into that suspended state of animation somewhat that they go into whenever it's really cold um, they burn they burn through and use up a lot more feed they'll use up a lot their stores a lot faster so what happened is nine of them before I could get into the hive and do anything about it nine of them starved actually what I should have done I guess in 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 you know they say hind, hind, hindsight is 2020 but I guess I could have just went out and popped the lid real quick tossed some sugar cubes up on the top frames and put the lid back down real fast even when it was cold that would have given them something but there's no guarantee the cluster could have got to them because when you just throw them in the top of the box like that you don't know where the cluster's at and if it's too cold for the cluster to move which we really didn't have a whole lot of that problems you know even though it was too cold for them to fly out of the hive they still they still would move you know it was warm enough they would have moved around to, to go to the food inside the hive but there wasn't any food inside the hive. Uh, problem is, I just didn't, uh, I knew they were going through food faster. I just didn't realize how bad or how fast. So, you know, had I been able to just pop the top and throw some sugar in some of those nine other hives, I might have more than one hive. But I'm doing everything that I possibly can to save this hive. And, you know, when life gives you lemons, you're gonna make lemonade. I do have drawn comb from all those other hives. Uh, and so hopefully once these guys start building I can uh, start using that drawn comb to build them up even faster and to start making some nukes and filling these other hives back up okay I, last year last year I split one hive one one uh, one hive I split it by the end of the year, I had 10 hives. Now, some of them were just five frame hives, but that's all right, they were hives. 
uh, most of they were all at least double deep hives, even the five frames. So they were they were pretty good sized hives. Okay, but I managed to get ten hives last season out of one hive. Well, the advantage that I've got this year over last season is even though I'm not any better right now because I still only have one hive starting out the season. If you'll remember last February, we had, you know, we had, uh, you know, the North Pole move in for about three and a half weeks there in February. And at some point during that time, I didn't lose the hive completely, but it went queenless. Well, by the time I was able to locate a hive, it was April the 6th when I put a, when I put a, a mated queen into that hive. Okay, so it was almost May before I was getting the first brood, before they could start to build up. Well, folks, uh, if your hive is not building up until May, you know, <laughs> they should be building up in February, starting to. So... That's three months of building and and what have you that I lost last year but I still managed to get I still managed to get ten hives out of that this year I've got all the frame all the drawn combs from those hives that I lost plus I've got a laying queen in February instead of April so hey we're looking for good things to happen this summer and uh, we hope you'll stay tuned when we want to uh, keep you informed on all of it i hope you enjoy watching this if you want to see more and you haven't already hit that subscribe button if you like the video we'd love to have you hit the like button leave a comment of some kind we'd like to read your comments we comment we and we reply to every one, single one that we possibly can uh, you know we just uh we love doing this. We hope you guys find find something a little interesting to watch and hopefully take a little information that will be useful in your situation away from these videos. And Anyway, I'm going to cut this video off and try to get this up on YouTube for you. And uh, as always, y'all have a great day and God bless.